Hi, welcome to the first show of the season for STV. On this show, Rich and I are gonna talk about some of the 2022 sleds that are just now hitting the snow. Then in Afterburn, I've got Yamaha's LTX GT, the one with the power steering on it on deck. Plus, we're gonna kick this season off with one of the most epic places you can go to ride a snowmobile, West Yellowstone in Montana. Now, this show and this season, which is STV's 25th on the air, all starts right now. STV is brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. Polaris, think outside. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of pickup trucks for 56 years. Tough, smart, capable. Rich, time to talk 2022 model year snowmobiles. Now, you've got more experience with Polaris stuff. I got a little bit more with Yamaha stuff. Um, but I'm curious to know about Polaris stuff. So what was sort of hot well, there's for a, you there? There's a couple of standouts I found, Jeff, was definitely the new XCR for the guys who want to go on the trail. Mm -hmm. And also the Boost. The 850 Boost was, it was a handful for... For someone like me, it was uh, it was a little bit overboard. You can get up the hill real quick, which was nice because yeah. the boost happens right away. Unlike it, some altitude of the, level, right? It's starting to does, build boost. It builds right away. So unlike some of the other manufacturers that have boost that operates up top, when yeah. you start, this one starts down low. Because I know, like you and I are not again, we're not the mountain guys, but we've got members of the crew are um, Swarmy, Scallet, Jordan. You know, those guys know how to hustle in the mountains, and I think they were pretty impressed with it. The problem we had with the boost with those two, especially uh, Swarmy, was kicking them off the sled. No one could catch up to them to say, hey, stop, having fun, come back down to reality and ride with the rest of us. So the boost was obviously a big hit, but I mean, for us Flatlanders, I, I mean, I was really interested in the, the XCR. It's down the Matrix chassis, What's and, and all the goodness that that brings, so it must be a pretty good sled. It right handled now. like nothing else. Um, it was just precision, and everywhere you wanted to go, you just point those skis, and it would take you there. Yeah. Um, I really liked the big bumps. It would just soak up everything you can throw at, especially for flatland riding. It. Yeah. If you want to run ditch lines at 100 miles an hour, you can run ditch lines at 100 <laughs> miles an hour. Whatever you want to do with this snowmobile, it is ready and uh, waiting for you. And speaking of precision stuff, I mean, uh, I've got a little bit more time on the Yamaha product than you do, and I want to talk about EPS, electronic power steering. Um, my thoughts on the EPS was that, you know, at slow speeds, um, the assist that it gives you is, is quite a bit. You notice it right away when, when you're going slow, especially with the bigger models like the LTX GT, that type of thing. Sure, they're heavier SRX. Yeah, and... The SRX is missing the, it. The SRX doesn't have it, but, uh, but the GT has it. Um, you know, those bigger sleds, I think, definitely benefit from it. Um, at slow speeds, you can really feel the assist helping you uh, steer the machine. But what's interesting is that it does kind of pull back on its assist as the speed goes up. So at no time did I ever feel the bars go numb in my hands. Right, gives and, you enough rider feedback that you yeah. understand what's going on. Did you find that with the Thundercat too? Again, the Thundercat and SRX have sort of moved apart a little bit, but um, what was I your experience? I thought the Thundercat was definitely Articat's best sled they've had. <laughs> the best sled they have coming into the new season. Also, it's the best Thundercat they've ever produced. I mean, the inch and a quarter track gives you just enough traction. When you give it some fuel coming out of the corner, it goes, Yeah. which is nice. It doesn't spin the track. It will spin the track, but not as much as the SRX coming yeah. out of the corners. And I also felt that uh, coming in at high speeds in the corners, because it's hard not to go high speed with the Thundercat, <laughs> it would v just carve around the corners. It still had good balance. Very planted, yep. Yeah. Not a lot of body roll. It knew what it had to do, and it did it at a good rate of speed. And I mean, both those sleds have got improvements with the secondary clutch, some mechanical improvements mm -hmm. there with the new clutch. But um, yeah, the SRX really didn't see a lot of, of improvements other than the clutch, except for now it's in a, a pretty spicy red and white um, it's, it's interesting. The retro look. The retro look, the, yeah. the Yamaha racing look. And I like it, 
kind of don't like it. I still am a blue Yamaha guy, but the, the red and white really does look sharp on the snow. It's uh, People will not question what you're riding when you pull up on that, uh, that SRX. Well, that's the iconic SRX flagship from back in the 70s, Exactly, right? yeah. That's the color it's, scheme. it's going old school. Yep. Um, I wonder when they're going to do a yellow one, but I think there's a rule against that. <laughs> you know, yellow and black, it would look pretty good too. But, uh, but yeah, the SRX still has the one inch track. It did not evolve the way that the Thundercat did. So those, those models are definitely not the same or as close as they once were. You know, Skidoo's also got uh, some new stuff coming to the party. There's a, a Moxie and the Smart Shock. So any thoughts on those, uh, those two innovations? Oh, I thought the, the Moxie was a great sled, handled well. Does, it has a better throttle mm -hmm. than the, the standard the, the Ace. Nine, yeah. Yep, 900 Ace. Um, it, the Smart Shock system makes all the difference in the world. Uh, for a high-end snowmobile, a lot of guys that are buying high-end snowmobiles, Jeff, don't want to be, they're not tuners. They don't, no. they don't claim to be tuners. They don't want to be a tuner. They just want a snowmobile to go the way it's supposed to have a box. And, and that's the great thing about the IQS system that, that Yamaha and Articat are using too. It's just, it's three, three settings, soft, medium, mm -hmm. and firm. It's easy to understand as a rider, as an enthusiast. You don't have to be a suspension guru and you can get the most out of your sled quickly. Well, the Smart Shock system is even easier than that. Yeah, it does it, it, does it automatically. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, we've got another manufacturer in North America now, the Lynx, which is a pretty cool buggy in and of itself for both Flatland and uh, yep. Boondock guys. So there is a lot of good stuff coming for yep. 2022. The Lynx, there's a lot of hype and excitement at Snowshoot, and it didn't disappoint. It worked real well. For the guys who want to go blazing through the woods, unmarked trails, yep. it works awesome. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Even on the trails, I thought the skis were probably the best skis on any production snowmobile for trail riding. That's interesting. Um, to wrap up things for 2022, uh, any other further thoughts on, on something that really blew you away? Well, I really like the new technology. I'm not the tech savvy guys, some of the young kids out there, but the new screens, like the 7S on the uh, Polaris, is, yeah. oh, it is just a beautiful thing. Keep you out of trouble all day long, gives mm -hmm. you all the information, you're plugged in, so when you're playing hooky, driving, you can take phone calls, no problem, yeah. text message, everything's there. You can see exactly where you are in a trail system. And better yet, you can see if other people have the same technology, right. you can see that. Follow one another and you can send it to your friends. They look where I went today. I mean, it's all good stuff. And for me, uh, technology again is the EPS with Yamaha. Uh, of course, it goes back to the days of the Apex was the last time mm -hmm. we saw power steering on a snowmobile. And there's, you know, Apex guys that are still riding Apexes because they would not give up that power steering option. Now, we will know about things like new technology when we go to snowshoot this coming spring. Mm -hmm. And uh, coming up a little bit later on in the show, um, I got a story about uh, West Yellowstone, which is where snowshoot takes place. So stick around for that because it's coming up later in the show. This segment is brought to you by CKX. If I was gonna compare Yamaha's 2022 LTX GT to an automotive equivalent, I would be thinking of things like Porsche, BMW, Bentley, and Mercedes, all brands who are known for building the ultimate GT class automobiles, understated on the outside, but absolute beasts under the skin. In its ink blue and regal gold, this is one Yamaha that defines what it is to be a GT-class snowmobile. Yamaha describes the owners of its GT line as uncompromising when it comes to their snowmobiles and snowmobile experience. In Yamaha's eyes, the GT owner is someone who isn't necessarily looking to log ultra-high mile seasons. Instead, they're going for quality over quantity for their sledding experiences. I think, rather, I know the LTX GT is one of those snowmobiles that will deliver on its promise for the ultimate touring snowmobile experience. And a big part of how this sled does it is in the linear power delivery of a super smooth, very powerful engine package that will not only kick the snow dust up on a fast pass across the lake, but will also be very well behaved for any type of trail or speed.
You might think that the key to this sled is the new electronic power steering, and while EPS does add to the ride quality experience, it's only one of the details that make this sled an exceptional touring snowmobile. I'll get back to EPS in a second. First, I want to concentrate on the whole package. For 2022, there isn't a whole lot different than the previous model year over the classy new paint job in EPS. And while I would have liked to have seen an improved gauge package, there wasn't much else I'd wish for in a touring sled. Standard equipment on the LTX GT is a taller windshield to keep the rider out of the slipstream, and there's a heated seat that may sound ridiculous, but can definitely take the chill off your bottom end with just enough heat to know it's definitely helping. The sled also has the new strike ski, which was introduced last season and has vastly improved the handling at all types of trail conditions. From the seat, you can also enjoy a plush suspension that's equipped with the three position Fox 1.5 inch QS3 shocks out front and a 2.0 QS3 on the rear suspension arm. The center shock gets a monotube gas 1.5. However, the GT only gets the manually adjusted system. SRX models get the trick adjust on the fly from the handlebar version. Perhaps the GTs will see this as an option in the future. Each position is adjusted here on the shock absorber and can quickly be felt in the seat of the pants feel on the snowmobile. Now, the simplicity of this Fox system is really its secret. It's easy to understand, make changes, and really feel the difference improving your ride experience on the snowmobile. And the best part is you don't have to be a suspension guru to optimize this setup. Other standard features of the GT include a large 20-inch tunnel bag for storage, reverse, DC power outputs, and of course, the power steering. Together with the silky smooth power from the turbocharged Genesis engine provide a very comfortable place to be to soak up mile after mile on the trails. Getting back to the power steering, EPS fits perfectly with the premium design and target riders for the GT. The assist provided by the system is variable depending on the speed of the vehicle and engine RPM, decreasing as speeds increase. The EPS also dampens unwanted feedback back into the bars, however, the system isn't numb feeling to ride. The electronic power steering can really be felt at the end of the day, or rather not felt at the end of the day because your shoulders and arms aren't sore from steering this thing all day long. A true GT machine should provide as much comfort as it does performance, and the 2022 Yamaha LTX GT does just that. With premium systems and a premium look, this is one snowmobile that delivers on a promise of understated performance and comfort. This segment is brought to you by Royal Distributing. With my role as the host of a snowmobile television show, I've had the absolute privilege to ride all across the snow belt in both the US and in Canada. Now, over the years, there's been a few destinations that have really stood out above all the others. And West Yellowstone in Montana is one of those places. Yellowstone was once the undisputed go-to destination for snowmobilers of all stripes in North America. It didn't matter if you were a mountain rider or a flatlander. If you rode Yellowstone, you were a snowmobile king, and the town of West Yellowstone was at the center of it all. Back then, the centerpiece of this destination was the park itself, which at the time was an almost free-for-all for people who rode there. Now there were problems with wildlife encounters, speeding, and pollution that forced the park to pump the brakes on this type of access. Snowmobiles suddenly had to be certified clean to enter the park and then only on guided tours that kept everyone on trail. The park, however, always seemed to overshadow the snowmobile experience outside of its boundaries, both before and after the restrictive measures were put into place, which was unfortunate because the truly epic sledding around West Yellowstone wasn't really well known to the general sledding public. In recent years though, that story, these facts, and this place are all building momentum again. A 
Of course, there's still access to the park right from the town of West Yellowstone itself. Snowmobiles or snow coach tours are available to enter the park, or you can choose your own people power to trek or ski your way in. Buffalo, other wildlife, beautiful pristine wilderness, and of course, Old Faithful are all sites that await. This type of access can be easily arranged by one of the many outfitters inside the town of West Yellowstone, which is just one of the many services that can be found in this town that does well at capturing the Western experience. Here, there's plenty of choice when it comes to accommodations, with everything from chain hotels to unique owner-operator locations offering up your typical hotel rooms or, if you like, individual cabins. There's also plenty of dining options here in the winter as well, with good hearty food choices. And because crowds aren't as big in the winter, it means wait times are almost non-existent. There's even museums and animal habitats like the Grizzly and Wolf Discovery Center to experience. Here, you can come face to face with some very big bears. And of course, all the services are accessible from the seat of your snowmobile on roads that are specifically maintained to keep a layer of snow and ice on them just so you can get around on your sled. It doesn't matter how cool the town is, if the riding is no good, it's never gonna be a truly great destination. Thankfully though, that's not an issue here in West Yellowstone because the ride here, well, it's about as good as it gets. The town grooms and maintains a system of about 400 miles of trail that not only loop out and back to the town of the west, but also link into Idaho. Groomed daily, these are the type of trails any snowmobiler craves. This tabletop smooth system also has what I can best describe as a special flow to it. With just the right amount of turns and straight sections, there's also beautiful scenery from trees to mountains, and if you want to talk elevation changes, this system takes you from the town at roughly 6,000 feet all the way up to about 8,000 on the top of two tops. Riding up to the top of two tops to get your picture taken with the ghost trees up there is one of the most memorable things you can do. Plus, if you're up there on a bluebird day, you can see all the way to the Tetons. And with the trail leading almost all the way to the peak, this is a memory achievable by anybody, not just riders with mountain goat type skills. Now, the ghost trees won't be the only memorable part of this ride though, which will take you through the experience of traveling through open plains, perfectly set with mountains as the backdrop and a huge river system. Then the trails also tighten up as they wind their way through the surrounding forest system, taking you alongside crystal clear flowing mountain creeks at the bottom of a valley and onto open trails that feel like they're clinging to the side of huge mountain slopes. There's also switchback style trails that'll have you popping your eardrums as you climb up and up, where the views you can experience right off the seat of your sled as you ride along are the type of views all other views are judged on. The area also offers up endless riding zones for people looking to put their off-trail skills to the test as well. With the size of the system, pockets of fresh powder are basically limitless, and the variety of terrain will keep any mountain rider entertained. Exploring the area's off-trail will pay dividends for riders who crave this type of adventure. With the trail system and access to the Alpine, there's something here for everyone, both on and off trail. It simply doesn't matter what type of rider you are, West delivers on its promise of an epic ride. With the whole area centered around the town of West Yellowstone, the system and its series of loops are supported by the businesses catering to the sledders. Which means not only is there easy access for your sleds to travel the town roads, there's also plenty of rental and guiding operations for people looking to ride. Here you can find your typical rental sled, not high on performance, but will get you to all the great spots to experience. Perfect for guided adventures with a group or available to take on your own. Then, on the other end of the spectrum, along with any sled in between, there's the top-of-the-line mountain sleds available too for riders who may not be able to bring their own sleds to the area, but don't want to compromise as they challenge themselves against all West Yellowstone has to offer. Even novice snowmobilers can take advantage of the experience here with all the tour operators and guides. Snowmobiling in West Yellowstone is an achievable adventure for everybody. Being from the East, one of the things I appreciate is the great mix of both on-trail and off-trail experiences here. Like I've mentioned off the top, I've had the chance to get to some truly great snowmobiling destinations, but I can think of no other destination outside of West Yellowstone that offers literally the best of both worlds. For me, my skills as a mountain rider are never going to match those of folks who ride the Alpine every day, so going to ride in places that challenges them is a little tough for me. Here in West Yellowstone though, I can sample the off-trail experiences that fit my skill level and also enjoy some of the best trails while doing it. Here, 
you get to have your cake and eat it too. West Yellowstone is one of only a handful of places that I look forward to going back to again and again. Each trip is as special as the last one and right now, <laughs> I can't wait to get back there. This segment is brought to you by Yamaha. For this Yamaha Pro Tip, I've got a trick to show you how to get a little bit more heat out of your heated handlebar system, especially if your sled's getting a little older and maybe it's not putting up the heat it used to. Now the solution to this is to put a little bit of expansion foam inside the handlebars themselves. That way the heat that is generated by your heated grips is coming into your hands and not being wasted away on the inside of the bars. Now, the trick for doing this, there's a couple of them. Number one, you might have to drill a hole or enlarge the hole in the end of your grips just to get the straw inside. Then before you inject any foam, make sure you have a drop cloth and cover up anything that you don't want to get this stuff on because if you put just a little bit too much foam in, that stuff's going to come squirting back out at you. Now, if that happens and you get foam somewhere you don't want it to be, don't touch it. Don't even breathe on it. Go for a coffee or something. Let it kind of foam out and crisp up. That way you can pick the dry piece off. If you were to wipe this stuff up while it's still wet, that's going to smear and that stain is going to be with you forever. Now, the best part about this solution is the problem is solved with just a few dollars. Now, I'm looking forward to getting back to West Yellowstone, but also to a number of other destinations that we have on tap for this coming season with STV. So make sure to check back week after week for new adventures. Till next time, keep your skis between the trees. Closed captioning is brought to you by Woody's. STV has been brought to you by CKX, where your passion. Schaefer's, specialized lubricants since 1839. Best Western Hotels and Resorts, ready to get away? 